it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we're going to get started on page four and five and we're going to go ahead and do both of these in this video because they're going to have the same design and in fact I'm using the same paper on both sides there's only going to be the only difference is it's going to be a mirror image um, so we're going to get started on page four and it's pretty pretty straightforward we're going to have uh, one flap that's going to get applied actually to the center of the page and open away from the spine. And then we've got two flaps, um, one that's gonna come from the top, one from the bottom, over on the left-hand side. So let's start there. <clears throat> so these flaps, there's gonna be two of them, are six and a half by three and a half. Six and a half by three and a half, score half inch side and we're going to apply that flush to the corner edges of the top and bottom so we're going to start with um, the bottom one okay that's it we flip it around we're going to do the same thing top down Does that look right? It does. Actually, it looks a little high. I'm going to readjust that real quick. I think that was just a little high. Hopefully I'll be able to lift this because I didn't burnish it. There we go. No problem. Okay. I'm going to lower that down just a little. Make sure I'm flush on the sides. Everything looks good. All right, now we're, that's better. Okay, so it's nice and flush on the side. It's not off the top. I just uh, laid it down a little, little too high, but we're all set now. So the top flap is actually gonna be the one that overlaps. And I think I'm going to, no, I don't think. I know I'm going to use some magnets here. So let's go ahead and get those in place, and that'll keep those flaps from moving around on us. So I'm going to put one here. And the opposing one here. Fumble fingers. There we go. All right. Okay, let's burnish that down real quick. It's going around the tape. It'll soften the edge of the magnet, plus just make sure it's nice and adhered. So that's in. Okay, so the... The second piece is um, is this flap. And let me talk to you guys a little bit about what I had designed. So this is what I had in my mind, but I'm starting to rethink it. <laughs> and this was gonna be a stripe that goes in between the two. And then this would go here. So that was the, the look I was going for. And the reason I'm kind of rethinking it is this flap actually the spine is right here. So my concerns are this flap might get actually hung up in the spine, um, which would not be a good thing. So I think what I'll do to solve that problem is just have it open away from the spine on this side. But I'm still going to use this Actually, I don't have to use that anymore. Well, I'm thinking about it. Him and Han. I really want it to open this way. <laughs> so, 
what do I want to do here? If I adjust it um, by moving it over this way, that means I have to make a different design decision, which I hadn't um, accounted for here. So I'm not sure. So I'm hemming and hawing. So in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and lay these down because I know they're not gonna change. And then I'll think about that a little bit more and we'll we'll finalize it shortly. I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna toss caution to the wind and install it the way I designed it in the first place. Um, what's the alternative? The alternative would be, this would be next to the spine. No, that's not what I want. This is what I want, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do it anyway and suffer the conse consequences, if any. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna have to take a break. Um, I think somebody's at my door. Sorry, we just got started, but um, I'll be back in a few minutes and we can finish this up. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and get started laying this down. Sorry about all that hemming and hawing and the interruption with the dog. And I'm probably going to get interrupted again, so I'm just giving you a heads up. But I'm going to try to get a couple of pieces of paper down before that happens. I've got my dog doll in here with me. And I was, I was editing some videos today and she was laying on the couch next to me. And I kept hearing her, her little charms on her um, collar, which usually means she's wandering around. And I keep looking over there and she's just laying on the couch being still as can be. And then I realized that what I was hearing was the same thing you're hearing right now. It was her charms in the background of the video. <laughs> so I kept looking. It's like, why aren't you moving? I can hear that you're moving. <laughs> It's kind of a weird sensation, but anyway, she's in here with me for now, too. And uh, her dad just got home, my husband, and uh, he's unloading the car. So as soon as he's done with that, I'll probably get interrupted again so that we can uh, sort of do a changing of the guard when it comes to watching the dog. She's a good girl, but she is a puppy, and uh, she gets bored, and then she gets in trouble. <laughs> she's got a brand new trick. We have... Um, a little uh, gate that we have separating her from some of the upstairs living space because um, I really don't want her up there with all the carpet and her fur. And she just realized that um, she can jump over the, the little gate that we've put up. So that's been her trick all day today is jumping over the gate. So I've been running up and down the stairs corralling her. Um, I mean, she's she's okay. I just work... I just have bad allergies, so if she was up in my bedroom, I'd just be miserable the next day because of it. So, so unfortunately, she has to stay downstairs where all our hard surfaces are. So anyways, and there she is. She's wandering around, digging through my trash right now. Okay, so I was in the last um uh, scene before I cut away um, to deal with a dog. I was going back and forth about a design decision that I had made, um, which is one of the challenges of designing for tutorials is you're sort of designing and cutting but not actually fastening anything down. And then when you actually come to construct it, sometimes you uncover some somewhat some some of what turn out to be not such good design decisions and you're like hmm why did I do that or especially if you're designing one page in isolation of the other anyways um, to make a long story short I had um, designed this flap to get installed on the middle of the page and to open this way and these flaps open up and down and I was rethinking it because I sometimes when you have a flap that opens away from the um, the hinge area it can sometimes um, be affected by that. But I'm gonna throw caution to the wind and do it the way I designed it anyway. <laughs> so I'm gonna install it um, sort of flush here and then I've got this designer strip that's gonna run um, perpendicular to the page and it's gonna go like this. So I'm trying to decide if I need to lay down my designer strip first or if I can go ahead and install 
in just to be just to be careful. I'm going to install the strip first just in case this flap needs to come slightly over it. Um, I can do that rather than trying to scoot it underneath the flap after it's in installed. This, um, this strip right here is just a half inch um, and that's just an easy size to keep track of and trim and and um, so that makes this three and a half and this is four and this little strip makes up the other half inch that makes the whole width of this equal to eight inches which is the size of the pocket page so that's where these sizes came from i just realized i hadn't inked it which i'm going to do whoops, right now really only one side's going to show it's going to be on that side the other side's going to be under a hinge so i'm going to just do three of the four sides And it's very messy. <laughs> Be good to do this before you get your glue on. And I'm just gonna butt it right up against um, this flap here. It's not gonna go under it, it's just gonna go right next to it. And I'm gonna come all the way up. Okay, and now we're gonna install this, and I'm gonna make the corner of this flap, which opens to the left. Um, these corners are just gonna line up with the corners of the pocket page. Okay, as soon as I get this down, I'm going to take a quick break and let my dog out. So there we go. So it's going to open that way. So there you have it. So we've got some more decorating to do, but basically those are the interactive components of page four. And page five will be essentially the same, only it'll be this way. Okay, I will be back shortly, guys. Okay, I'm back. So we had just finished putting this down, so now I've got this piece trimmed out. And what I did here is, so page five is gonna be here, and it's basically, well it's not basically, it's exactly a mirror image. Um, with the exception of this paper because it's actually the eight by eight collection pack piece that I split in half. And then if you're gonna do the same thing and you split it in half, if you want that continuous pattern, um, I split it at four and then I had to take an eighth inch off either side, the outsides, and that, that way it's still a continuous pattern. Even though they won't be touching, there'll be a gusset here. That's what I decided to do. So I just wanna share that with you. So as soon as we're done with this page, we're gonna essentially do the same thing on page five. And I think I need to ink, yeah this and we'll lay it down and then we'll start decorating Ooh, yeah I can go ahead and lay this down but I am going to use a magnet to close this flap too so I'm actually using two sets of magnets on this page which is pretty rare I don't usually do that um, usually I try to figure it out so that one set of magnets will hold everything in place but these are just two two different uh, well, not different, I guess the, they don't overlap, so there's no opportunity to, to save a magnet. All right, we're set. Okay, so that's in and that's all fine. So now we need to place our magnet on the inside here and here.
Okay. There we go. Okay. So let's come back over here and look through our scraps. I had trimmed out some papers that are roughly the same size as what we're dealing with here. So I'm set those there. I just need to shuffle some papers. I got all my A sides, but my B sides are kind of buried. Here they are. Here they are. So here are some of, some of our choices. I really like that brown. So that's kind of the way I'm leaning at the moment. Browns. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Yeah. So I think that, so this was for page four and then I would have the same patterns for page five. So I'm, I'm thinking that's what I'm gonna do at the moment. And then we still need to cover um, these three pieces. And here is what I think I had going. to work with some scraps so I'm going to take a break get this a little bit more organized so you guys don't have to watch me fussing with the paper so much and when I get back we'll be um, ready to I'll have these trimmed and inked we can lay these down and I'll have made these choices okay let's continue working on page four um, I went away and trimmed out the rest of my paper so you guys don't have to watch me fool around with that so this is the cover um, let's go ahead and get these two pieces in these two are from the 12 by 12 patterns and solids. And I know I forget, I've forgotten to mention some of the other ones. I'll do my best uh, to try to tell you which pack they're coming out of. Um, <laughs> I thought I inked everything, I have not. <laughs> so actually, I'm gonna cheat because I have this one inked already. Just making sure which direction was up that this side is up which is what I thought but I just want to double check Now we're going to do this one on this side. Okay, there you go. So that's done. OK, 
Okay, now we'll do the inside of these flaps. I'm just shifting to make sure I've got plenty of headroom here. So we've got a top, a bottom, and then the centerpiece, and I'm gonna start with the centerpiece. So as usual, I'm gonna turn it so I can get a better view of the edges here. And just uh, dry fitting it real quick. It looks pretty good. And then I've got these um, these two mats, and they're going to be just the same on the top and bottom. And then I'm going to add a trim detail. I think. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that right now or if I'm going to do it during embellishing. Uh, this pattern is from the 8x8. felt like I might have some interference, so I'm just double checking before I glue it down. Nope, it's gonna close, okay. Let's see if I wanna do the patterns the same orientation. Looks good. There we have it. So there's page four. This opens top and bottom. And this opens like so. And then we have this decorative strip here in between. So we're going to do the same thing with page five. And it will just be a mirror image. So let's pull in page five. Clear my space here. Okay, we're going to start by laying in our top and bottom flaps. This is three and a half, three and a half by six. Three and a half by six, you're gonna score half inch on the, I said that wrong. Three and a half by six and a half, and you're gonna score half inch on the six and a half inch side. It's gonna get mounted flush to the corner. On the right hand side.
Okay, and we know we're going to have um, magnet closure here. So we can go ahead and do that now. There's our magnets, top and bottom. Okay, um, we're going to, these are gonna be the inside of this flap. Here's the outside, I'm gonna set those aside. So let's go ahead and lay in the designer paper. So this is gonna go on top here. This is going to go down here. It's already trimmed in ink, so I'm ready to lay it down. And I'm going to put this contrast in so I can see my edges a little better, and so can you. Let's put this one under here. Let's dry fit it and then we'll lay it down. Looks good. Okay, so the next thing is this piece. And I think what I'm gonna do is lay this one first. I'm gonna close these flaps. And then, just a little bit of a, oh, there we go. Lay this strip down first. And that way this piece will get, um, centered between the strip and the outside edge of the page. And then we can also lay down that flap. Okay, it's coming along pretty good. So I just want to center it between uh, the top and bottom of the page. And that looks good. Okay, now that that's installed, we can pull in this flap. And it's gonna get installed just like so. And it's just gonna go even with these corners here. So I'm gonna turn it to the side so I can see my corners clearly. I'm gonna line my corners up and then I'm gonna push back and fold that flange in, or the hinge, as I go back. 
but I'm going to hold this edge steady. There we go. There it is, girls and boys. Okay, we need our magnets to hold this closed. I'm not doing any color blocking back here, so I don't really have to worry about, you know, so much where my magnet gets placed. If you're color blocking, you definitely have to think that through. Am I going to have a break right on top of the magnets? Okay, that's in. Okay, so this is the piece that I've selected for... No, it's not. <laughs> here it is. This goes right here. This is from... You can tell because of the scale difference. This is from the 8x8, eight eight, and I mentioned that when I showed you the layout between the two. This is the 8x8 eight eight collection pack. with the insides and so this is going to be like so so I'm going to pull on page four and we're going to open it up and what I want is a mirror image so it's going to go down just like so Looks good. I forgot to tell you the size of this flap sorry about that I don't think I have it written down, so I'm going to have to measure that real quick. Um, it's four and a half by eight, four and a half by eight, and you're going to score a half inch on the four and a half inch side. So you have a finished design space of four by eight. And then I had to. I had, can't hold a thought these days, so I had to go back and look at page four again. I'm going to turn it sideways so I can see these edges.
Okay, so that side is finished. And now we're gonna do the inside of these two flaps. And it, again, it'll be the same as um, page four. So we've got this pattern, and this is from the eight by eight, eight by eight collection pack as well. And so are these um, from the eight by eight collection pack. Is that right? I have to rethink that. Yes. I'm looking at the pattern. Yes, it is definitely from the 8x8 collection pack. It's have to look at the scale. So I don't think I mentioned it, and we're halfway through the book, but what I started with is a bundle. Um, and a bundle is a graphic 45 thing. We don't bundle anything else. Um, and it's because Graphic 45 releases so many elements when they release a collection. They release a 12 by 12 collection pack, a 12 by 12 patterns and solids, sticker sheet, chipboard sheet, tags, or not tags and pockets, ephemera uh, pieces, um, and journaling cards, as well as die cuts, and an 8 by 8 collection pack. So a bundle is all of those things for a given collection. And, um, you know, always at the beginning of a release, we have everything. Um, but some items sell a little faster than others. So, hmm, usually, I don't know, somewhere around nine, probably a little longer than that, closer to, to a year, it gets harder and harder to get all of the collection pieces. Um, but usually the ephemera and journaling cards sell out, and then the chipboard is right behind that first because card makers can use those and they don't necessarily need all the other elements. So if you are a Graphic 45 fan and you like these um, albums that I make and other people make as well, um, and you wanna get the whole collection pack, try to keep that in mind um, that it's probably something you should purchase within the first year of its release. Otherwise you run the risk of not being able to get the entire collection pack. And then when Graphic 45 re-releases a collection, they do a streamlined version of it. They call it a designer, a deluxe collector's edition. So you get a collection pack that's a blend of the original collection pack and some of the patterns and solids and chipboard. Is that right? Yes, and um, so you don't get the ephemera cards. Uh, the die cuts wouldn't come with it. Um, so it's just something to think about. You can definitely work with it, um, but it is a, a much more streamlined version. I think you get six different elements when you have an initial release. And also when the DCEs come out, there is no eight by eight collection. Uh, there's no version of an eight by eight. It's 12 by 12 only. Okay. It goes like that. That's page five. So here they go, side by side. And you can see my pattern continues across the, um, the divide. There'll be actually a gusset here between these two pages, but that's page four and five. I'm going to do some embellishing on this page. I don't know what yet. Um, I have picked out a couple of these ephemera cards um, that I'm thinking about using, but I haven't completely made my mind up. But I will cover that in the embellishment phase. And then I'm also planning on um, adding some of these um, border strips throughout the album. I've got uh, got them set aside. I just don't know where I'm going to put them yet, but I'll point them out when I do the walkthrough. Um, that's usually where I kind of go into detail of what the um, embellishments are on the, on the uh, album. So that's it for page four and five. Thanks everybody for tuning in. This is Daphne from Scrap and Create. Um, we really appreciate you guys taking time to spend with us on our channel. Um, if you like what we're doing, um, please give our shop a chance. We try to be competitively priced. And um, if you really like this, click the like button. And if you really, really like it, share it with somebody you know uh, likes to do um, albums. And I'll be back um, to put the, actually do the install of these pages into the book. Um, and then also I'm going to do the cover, liners, and decorate the outside for you guys. So those, those are videos that are coming up soon. Thanks for tuning in. This is Daphne. Bye.